uh, told the, the brothers in the coordinators committee office, you know, when we're facing these disasters and all these things. And I've been telling them for some time now, cheer up. It's going to get worse. And so we keep a sense of humor with it, but uh, that's a fact. What, what we're experiencing right now in this uh, global pandemic, I was telling the branch class yesterday, uh, it doesn't bother me. We've been waiting for this. Hello, everybody. Howdy. Oh, my goodness. We thought this was going to be a rest day. Well, aren't you glad it is a rest day? No, it's not. <laughs> We've got all this stuff coming in. My goodness. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yes, as you guys seen from the beginning clip, I want to thank JW Crisis very much. Love you, sweetie. Um, he got this from the latest Gilead graduation video. And here's Anthony Morris like, cheer up. This is what we've been waiting for. The fear mongering continues. Now, there's a lot going on in the world right now regarding pandemics and all of this other stuff. And there's, there's a lot of counteracting measures being put in place. Sometimes you may not know where to look or think to look. Um, because Kim and I both love firearms and guns and shooting and stuff, we watch a lot of what we call gun porn, right? <laughs> And it's really interesting to observe things from their perspectives. And this is something that Kim and I share, especially when it comes to hoarding the toilet paper. Some of these gun channels that these guys are doing is they can't figure out how is it that we have this pandemic and yet you go into the stores, the toilet paper's gone, but the things you need, the medicines, are overflowing on the shelves. What, what, what makes more sense? Well, the one we were watching, they said stores and pharmacies and places like Walgreens and stuff are overstocked on like Theraflu, the electrolyte drinks, vitamin C, you know, zinc, vitamin D. All of these things that would help us are overstocked in the shelves. Nobody is buying. Got to scratch your head over that one. Yeah. So there is a lot of things on YouTube to where people are trying to counteract this stuff that's going on. And I just can't help but wonder if the powers in place are not kind of sitting back and watching and seeing how people are going to react because the more insane we act like, you know, buying all the toilet paper and leaving the medicines on the shelf, does that help convince them that they have some sort of right to take more of our rights away? Because, I mean, think about it. It's a pandemic, and people are more concerned with buying toilet paper than the medicines that they need to possibly help them get through this? Wow, you people are insane! So let's go ahead and take more of their freedoms away. And the counteraction is to this. Think before you buy. What's more important right now? Medicine or toilet paper? Show loving concern for your fellow human being. Because... And, and thank you so much to all of you who have sent emails and phone calls worried about us. We appreciate it. Because the more the chaos is seen by these government officials, the more that gives them a reason to take our freedoms away even when this pandemic episode is behind us. And believe me, friends, it's not just Kim and I and people on gun channels. There is a whole host of other people that Kim and I watch that's not even connected with this XJW movement community we have that are saying the same things. Now is not the time to show illogical reasoning because the powers will use this as an excuse to take more of your freedoms away. And if that does happen because of a behavior problem, then those of us that think more sensible and logical, then we might just 
have to be a little more willing to step up as a roadblock. Now we've got many things here to cover that's going on in JW land. Now first I want to say that I've been checking in our local area and even on JW.org, get this, the governor of New Mexico has said that no gatherings with more than 10 people. So that means meetings, you know, field service meetings, assemblies, even anything like that. Now the restaurants here in New Mexico, they are only allowed to do takeout and deliveries. So you can't go in and eat a restaurant. They have shut down bars and breweries and many of those type of places, sports events, concerts, um, gyms, um, recreational facilities, anything like that. Okay, now with that in mind, not more than 10 people can meet. I have found out that the nearest kingdom hall to us in Morarty, New Mexico, and in our old congregation, Harris, New Mexico, apparently we've got some more body of elders that aren't listening to directions and cooperating with the superior authorities like the governor of New Mexico because at this point they are still planning on having their memorial at the Kingdom Hall as usual and you can go to JW.org and put in you know memorial on the about us memorial meeting and put in Morarty New Mexico and to Harris New Mexico and they're still meeting at the Kingdom Hall so it makes you wonder they're not cooperating with the authorities now also um, we are hearing that when the elders are contacting Jehovah's Witnesses and giving them the information to get the JW stream and something like that you know the um, the password that you need to get into it they're being told basically this appears to be the way it's going to be from here on out. It's going to be the norm, so we'll see. Yeah, but we'll see. You know, we've been saying this ever, from 2014 when they first started broadcast that we foresaw a online religion, and yes. what better way to where they're going to have to start doing this from here on out? Well, this kind of expedites their uh, plans. Yeah, and there's a lot more coming. Um, when it comes to the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society. I want to read something that we got from one of our sources, Atlantis. Now he quotes from the 1976 Awake, July 22nd, page 5. And I'm going to read his email because what I'm about to read, Kim's going to follow up with something on JW.org that is from their legal offices and you Jehovah's Witnesses and in particular you ex-Jehovah's Witnesses should really pay attention to what Watchtower is saying on JW.org but let me read this part first because it does tie in <clears throat> Atlantis writes does the Watchtower Society and by the way thank you Atlantis for this does the Watchtower Society get to pick and choose which laws of the lands they will obey yeah well, of course, it appears that way. <clears throat> At the bottom of the first paragraph on this page, which comes from JW.org, we read, We are carefully cooperating with health officials in all nations in an effort to contain the spread of the virus. Now listen to how contradictory this statement is to what you heard from Anthony Morris. We're waiting for this. Cheer up. Cheer up. This is what we've been expecting. Exactly. So why do they put a public statement that says we are fully cooperating? And yet Tony Morris in the Gilead class says, cheer up. This is what we're waiting for. You're speaking out of both sides of your mouth, you moron. Well, it also goes along with what I just said that the governor in this state has ordered no more than 10 people together in a gathering and here they are they still have it the memorial at the kingdom hall yeah going on with atlantis's email why would the watchtower society obey health officials and ignore police officials pedophiles are a virus too and likewise needs to be contained in fact, child abuse has been considered worse 
than some deadly diseases. And now he goes to the quote from the 1976 await, page 22, uh, excuse me, July 22, page 5. This is the quote. How serious is this pandemic? Child abuse, disease, kills two children daily, declared a headline in American Medical News of April 21st, 1975. A month later, the Journal of Legal Medicine reported, the most common cause of childhood death today may be child abuse. According to one commentator, the incidence of deaths due to child abuse or battering is greater than the total of those due to accidents and infectious diseases combined. Now that's a quote that Watchtower picked out that made them seem like they was an authority on child abuse and the disease of child abuse. He goes on. Pedophiles within the Watchtower organization also make people sick, cause harm, depression, suicides, and death. So why would the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses want a legal team to handle this pedophile epidemic instead of police professionals who already have jails to contain this virus? Where in the Bible are we instructed not to contact the authorities in child sexual abuse cases? The real facts show that by contacting the authorities in Watchtower child abuse cases, the media exposure brings reproach on the Watchtower name and reputation. Aren't these child abuse cases costing the Watchtower Society millions of dollars in court settlements? <coughs> I would add, well, this is what they've been waiting for. <laughs> Who, okay, going on. Who pays for these millions of dollar lawsuits? Sorry to interrupt, but no, that's what we've been waiting for. Oh, that's right. That's what we've been waiting for. Exactly. Cheer up. <laughs> this Cheer is what up. we've been waiting yeah, for. Yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. Exactly. Talk about turning the narrative around. Isn't it true that donations provided by Jehovah's Witness members are being used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. This means that Jehovah's Witnesses are being punished twice. First, when their child is abused, and second, when they have to pay legal fees and court settlements for their donations. If the Watchtower Society were to obey the laws of the land and contact police authorities in cases of child abuse, wouldn't this protection be showing more love for Jehovah's Witness members? than their children? Their See? Children, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses and are taught that in paradise you will gradually grow to perfection, then how many of your children will be abused and raped in paradise before you reach perfection? Very good point. Very good question. Pedophiles in paradise will not miraculously change overnight. It will take time for them to grow to perfection, too. And in the meantime, will your child be the first on their list? We encourage you to ask your elders why the governing body will obey health officials and ignore police officials. Asking and finding out the real truth about Watchtower's child abuse policies could save you and your child. Now, with that being said, once again, thank you, Atlantis. It's always a pleasure to be able to work with you and to be able to read some of the things that you send us. And the one thing that we want to remember in all of this, friends, the Watchtower and Bible Track Society has a database that the governments have been trying to get their hands on. And we all know this because of the little blue envelopes. So with that thought in mind, why don't you read, dear, what's on JW.org. Funny story about this. Holy Spirit, never deny it. I was looking for the address of Panama Branch. 
as you know, at our last nail and coffin, and, you know, so I was searching all over looking for the Panama branch address and to make sure, you know, to see if it was still on. Well, correction to our nail and coffin, I found out, yes, it's even in the yearbook back in 2017 that it was going to be removed as a branch. So, that being said, when I put in Panama, this was the second item that came up. And the reason is because it had Panama legal offices. Well, then it's like, okay, well, then the United States should have this one too. So when you go to Newsroom and click on Legal Resources, guess what comes up? Legal Offices. This, I read this and I'm like, oh my God, Mike, look at this. Like I said, looking for a branch address yeah. for Panama and this comes up. Legal Offices. Now listen carefully to what they're saying. No lawyer client relationship. No lawyer client relationship or other relationship is created by communicating with our law department or a lawyer in our law department by email or otherwise through our website. CYA people. Yeah. So there is no lawyer client privilege. Confidentiality. Okay. Now think about how they're trying to use the clergy confessional law loophole in their child abuse cases. When I read the next one. Communications not confidential. Okay? And that's in bold print. <laughs> Communications not confidential. We do not guarantee the confidentiality of any communication with our law department or a lawyer in our law department via email or otherwise through our website. And when you think about that, it's like, okay, so if someone calls in to their legal department talking about a child abuse case, they are not guaranteeing it's going to be confidential. So when they go to the Supreme Court saying, we're only trying to p protect, you know, all the people, the, all the pedophiles on our list from being, their name and everything being put out in the public, we're trying to protect them. Do you see what they're saying now? <laughs> there is no confidentiality with the legal department. Is, is this a backdoor way to have something in place already so that when that pedophile list does come out that who's ever on that list cannot revert back and sue Watchtower for giving up that confidentiality because they're saying right here we do not guarantee the confidentiality of any communication so this would also include elders calling in about child abuse cases there is no lawyer client relationship do you elders comprehend what is written on jw.org you know these are words from mother people mother is telling you hey we can't guarantee that we can keep our mouth shut when you talk to one of our lawyers there is no client lawyer privilege there is no guarantee of what you tell us will remain confident because we all know as ex Jehovah's Witnesses that the governments are trying to get their hands on that pedophile list and sooner or later it is going to be made public because this is what they're after now for those of you who haven't watched our nail and coffin from yesterday yet or did not catch it I read an email from an ex-elder there was something very important in that email because what started his waking up process was he went to the elder training school and they were saying that any accusation against an elder is to be considered basically a lie yeah do not believe any accusation any accusation against any elder including child abuse to me that was profound and I appreciate you know the ex-elder sharing that with us because that was profound 
And you know he's not the only one that that is waking up. That's right. You know, we've talked to several elders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all different things that wake them up. Oh, wait, wait. You, you, you ain't supposed to tell Watchtower that elders are talking with us. Who else are they going to talk to? They can't talk to their family because they'll be outed. Look, it's just as simple as this. You and I, Kim, are the two apostates that the elders love to talk to. <laughs> and they know we're not going to out them. Oh, absolutely. But if you call the legal department at Watchtower, hey. <laughs> they might out you. <laughs> they might. You know, it's not going to stay confidential. They do not guarantee it's going to stay confidential. So do you, Jehovah's Witnesses, comprehend what is going on in front of your own very eyes? I don't think a lot of them do. They don't because <clears throat> you're all in La La Land. You all look at this as, oh, what a, oh, isn't this what we've been waiting for? The Great Tribulation. Yeah, yeah, the Great Tribulation. Get your right go bags what? ready. All of you Jehovah's Witnesses that heard Anthony Morris, the turret, make that statement, what are you going to do six or seven months from now when we're still here? What are you going to do? See? I remember back in 1985 that the UN and some of the world governments all got together and declared 1986 is the year of peace and security. Hold on, Kim. Hold on. Armageddon's just around the corner because the Bible prophesied whenever it is they are declaring peace and security, you know, sudden destruction is going to be upon them. <clears throat> we all got our hopes up. Just to have them crushed when 19, when, yeah, 1987 came and went and nothing happened. So I would imagine when all this is over that there's going to be a lot leaving. That's what I can imagine. Because yeah. every time, Watchtower, you pull these type of shenanigans, more people leave. You, you just can't comprehend what you're doing. Well, in fact, in one of your phone calls pestering Bonnie, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bonnie, such a pest, um, I overheard your conversation that the witnesses, if they're stuck at home now, is there anxiety? Is there guilt? Is there depression? Is it going to get better when they're not having to, you know, pioneering service and all of that? You know, so it would be interesting for you PIMOs to find out, like, if your family members who aren't under that guilt trip of having to, you know, do their usual routine, if they feel better. Yeah, because basically what it boils down to is you don't have to go out in service, you don't have to go to the meetings, which means you really don't have to spend much time preparing for a meeting, and you're able to do all of this without any guilt. Think about it. Without any guilt, how is that going to change your mental disposition? And also, um, I've had several people send in emails to warn people. Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be um, calling on the phone and writing letters. Okay? If someone has the virus and coughs or sneezes on that letter, and then they send it out to people. So JWs are like Typhoid Mary and going to be sending all this virus because that virus can live for several days on surfaces like paper and cardboard and stuff like that. Typhoid Mary. I really like that one. <laughs> well, I, I, I trust me, I get it. It's a historical reference. I get it. And for you younger ones, Google Typhoid Mary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, also, um, I just want to mention, um, like I said, thank you all for your, you know, worried about us and concerned that we're staying safe. We're staying home as much as possible. Um, and, yes, there are many more cases in New Mexico. But don't you hate being right all the time? Do you guys remember I did a video a while back and I was talking about my call to the health department and I even told them you're going to see a lot of cases coming up now because there was a teacher in the school that my daughter works for. Well, guess what? It's public knowledge. It's on the news now. 
um, a student in that school has tested positive for the virus. And our daughter Shyla got a letter saying to self-quarantine for 14 days, two weeks. Now she had already been doing this because she knew, she knew that that teacher sick was probably, you know, contagious. And so she was just automatically, well, she will be at day 14 tomorrow and no symptoms yet. And I think her and I had it back in January. I had all the symptoms, so did she. But the thing is, is now they're trying to figure out, you know, where this kid, this student got it and community spread. So she had a nice conversation with the principal. Now she called the health department day before yesterday when she got the letter and they blew her off also. Like, oh, well, you know, what do you want us to do about it? You know, they're, they're not even testing people anymore unless you go into the hospital sick. So they basically blew her off too. Well, then she told the principal about this teacher. And um, I want to read part of her email that she had sent to the higher ups. And she posted this on Facebook too. Now that the news went public, I can comment on this. To those of you who are not taking this self-isolation serious and still going out, my story shows why it's so important to stay home unless absolutely necessary. March 13th was my last day of work because schools were closing. I went out for groceries that following Monday because I didn't panic buy and needed food. Since then, I have stayed home. This is the concerning part. Two days ago, I received a letter stating a student at my school tested positive for COVID-19 and to self-isolate 14 days from last possible exposure. For me, day 14 is in two days and I am symptom free so far, but what if I had it and was still going out? Or I wasn't showing symptoms? Think of how many people I could have infected. How many of the vulnerable would I have come in contact with? This is why you stay home. I only just received the letter two days ago. Think about that. So like for the past 12 days, she could have been, you know, infecting everybody. Staying home is not just about me staying safe, but also making sure you keep others safe. Now, they immediately called my son-in-law's supervisor and read him the letter that she had gotten from the school. And they told James to stay home now and self-isolate, you know, self-quarantine. Because this is how this is getting spread. And all of these people in the stores waiting in line and all bunched together fighting over toilet paper. What if one person in that group of people waiting, you know, to fight over toilet paper, all it takes is one person that's infected. Well, but see, here's the insanity. You have a pandemic, a global pandemic, and people are fighting over toilet paper. You would think common sense tells you you'd all be fighting over the medicines. Vitamin but you're, C, but yeah. you're not. Where is this nonsense coming from? Oh, the news media. Make sure you stock up on butt wipe, but leave the medicine on the shelf. Yeah. Idiots. And, you know, I don't want to make this a debate, and I know some believe there isn't a real virus. But I will say this. I had the weirdest flu I've ever had back in January. And you all know, I kept saying in the videos I was doing, I just can't get rid of this. Six weeks I was fighting that. And um, I know the homeopathic remedies really helped me. And I find it interesting, too, that China, you know, has been saying that they're treating the severe patients with high dosages of vitamin C. And I'm not recommending any medical, you know, remedy. But the news also said last night they haven't had any new cases in three days. In China. So, so just something to think about. Yeah, and, and and that's a something to think about. Here, Tony Morris says, we're waiting for this, we're waiting for this, but Cheer you up. listen to the news, and China's recovering. Where's your Armageddon, Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses? While China appears to be on the rebound, 
Watchtower is still pushing. This is the end. We're, we're waiting for this. Do you, Jehovah's Witnesses, not comp? No, they, they don't. I'm sorry. They, they just don't get it. Yeah. They just don't get it because they don't want to. They want to live with their heads buried in the sand. If I can't see you, then it means you can't see me type attitude. Yeah. Now I'm going to put the link down below to the JW.org legal CYA statement. And also I wanted to thank Ugly Watchtower. Um, and I am sorry. I just numbed out when we were doing our nail and coffin. But if you go to the IBSA properties, which is Watchtower's properties in the UK, and click on residential and go down they are selling mobile homes that they owned out there by Chelmsford yeah. when they were working on Chelmsford. They're in a mobile home park. They're selling those now. And I forgot about those, and so I printed them up, and hopefully I can remember to put them in the next nail and coffin because that was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. They're, they have four of these mobiles so far. See, one of the quickest way to lose some of your resources... It's not to mention them when you do a video. And that's something that Kim and I refuse to do. Purposely not reference where we're getting our sources and or those who are helping yeah. us behind the scenes. Yeah, so thank you Atlantis for putting the link on the Jehovah Witness um, dot net or dot com. You know, that forum. Um, but I will have to say that it was Ugly Watchtower, uh, she did a video about the mobile homes, and it was her letting me know about that. So thank you, Ugly Watchtower, and I'll put the link below to her video if you haven't seen it yet. Because it wasn't just the mobile homes, she also had another kingdom hall in that one. Yeah. So, and we appreciate all the help of you guys letting us know about these properties. It helps. Yes. It helps. In more ways than one. <laughs> it helps on our little list we're doing. You know that little list we're working on? Shh, shh. Wink, wink. Nobody's supposed to know about that. You know, even though you've let some of the, you know, cat out of the bag, but the full cat's not out of the bag. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, also, you know, because we're getting help from everybody finding right. these properties and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are just absolutely great. Just, yes. just remember, be kind to one another. Even if you don't agree politically, even if you don't agree theologically, when it comes to religious things, just remember where we've all come from and where we all want to eventually end up. And that's freedom. And when... You are fighting for freedoms. You're always going to um, conflict with somebody. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to argue whether this is a real pandemic or not, but I'm just going to say that if nothing else, this is a really bad flu. Having had a bad flu back in January for six weeks, that it, it, it was nasty. It was a nasty bug. So be careful out there and stay safe. And don't go around a bunch of crowds, you know, it's just not worth it, you know, the chance of catching, right. you know, this bug going around. Yeah. And for those of you that might be wondering, no, I, I've i never gotten it. I, I haven't gotten sick, so I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's because I work outdoors all day long. or He rarely I, I catches know. stuff that I get. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte and I will pass it to one another, and James had a mild case of it, and he never catches it for me. But if someone at the farm or somewhere else has it, he might catch it I then. I might. But I have been loading him up with vitamin C and orange juice. <laughs> well... What it is, let the truth out. I'm so honorary that there is no virus that dares to attach themselves to me because they know I'm going to kick their ass. <laughs> yeah. Now, I am hearing that drinking hot liquids helps, that the virus cannot survive over 80 degrees. So if it's in your throat and you drink hot liquids, and I've been drinking immune booster tea, 
as, as hot as I can stand it. And I've burnt my tongue a couple of times. But Well, it's interesting you should say that because it recalls to mind what I typically do. Shot of whiskey? Do, no, during the uh, winter. Is that I'll go to work and I'll either choose to make another pot of coffee or I'll choose to boil hot bo excuse me boil water and put that in my thermos and I actually sip on hot water all day long more than I do the coffee so maybe that's maybe that's the whole difference right there drinking that hot water yeah yeah cuz even what I was doing was a pan of water on the stove and I put a towel over my head and you have to get your face up above the steam to where it's not so hot but you're still breathing in that warm steam and I'd put a few drops of eucalyptus oil you know but not everybody can tolerate the eucalyptus oil right but you know it helped because I did have difficulty breathing and um, it is what it is but I'm not offering any medical advice no. but there are things that you can do to help yourself and protect yourself and boost your immune system and the biggest thing is is don't get excited overreact with what the news media is telling you because we all know from past experience they love to over sensualize sensualize what's the word I'm looking for sensational sensational you're having problems too <laughs> sensationalize there we go the stories I have a mouthful of orange juice too. <laughs> so guys, please, again, just be kind, be considerate, and if you have something you think your neighbor is in need of, then be willing to share and be willing to give it up. Because that lets the powers to be that they don't control us, and that's the biggest thing. See, Watchtower is one of those controllers because they do their part in keeping people ignorant. Yeah, exactly. So the biggest thing is just to remain calm and uh, don't let the fear porn with the media and videos and stuff, you know, upset you and stuff and we'll be okay. But I do find it amazing that the gun sales and ammunition sales are going right through the roof now. <laughs> you know, as if us Americans don't already have enough guns and ammunition. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not as even going to get into that. As one. if we already don't have enough, right, guys? <laughs> and gals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, look. Please. If you have more than 10 guns in your home, save the guns in the gun store for your fellow Americans. They're going to need them too, if it gets any worse. So thank you for watching, everybody. And thank you for the comments and the emails. We appreciate it. And don't worry about us. We are fine. And we will be fine. Here in the Southwest, um, Rice and beans and tortillas are a big thing here, so we have plenty to last us for a while, and we still have plenty of food, so we're doing fine, and we're avoiding town. We live out in the middle of nowhere. He's just working at the farm and coming home, and we go get gas when we need it, but we're fine. We're doing okay. And um, no need to worry about us. We're doing okay. Be safe, everybody. Yeah. Be safe and use some common sense. Yeah, exactly. So, thanks for spending this time with us. And I guess we'll uh, see you around in the next video, huh? Yeah, exactly. God bless. Bye. Bye.